Hello everybody, June here. Welcome to installment number seven, I can't believe it's seven, of the Vintage Cape Coat Making Series. And this particular installment is way overdue. I have been meaning to make this video for quite some time, but as I'm sure you don't need me to tell you, the world is on fire, figuratively speaking, with this whole pandemic. And not only have I not really had the motivation to make the video, I also haven't had the physical space to do it. Um, as you know, I live in New York City and I share my apartment with my husband and my son and it is a small apartment, so there isn't a whole lot of room for us to like, be individually alone, <laughs> separate from each other. And so that didn't leave much space to film the video, especially since I wanted to have the Cape code next to me as I talked over all of these things. But the last video was quite some time ago and I decided to just go ahead and film this video the way that it is with me just talking to you and then I will do close-ups as needed separately because finished is better than perfect and that is something that I've had to learn not only in my sewing but also in my life in general and with that said let's get to the scapegoat last year I had the incredible idea or what I thought at the time was an incredible idea to make this vintage cape coat pattern from the late 70s it is an Adam Adams pattern and I have talked about our nauseam in the last six videos so I won't go over all those details but in this video what I wanted to show you was what the cape looks like on me and basically my thoughts on the cape and whether it was all worth it so let's start with my thoughts so let's start at the end I suppose it was a lot of work and the work in this cape coat was made even more complicated and, and even lengthier by the fact that I was filming pretty much everything along the way because I had this video series going on that said although it was a lengthy process it wasn't necessarily a difficult process but I was trying to do my best to make this garment the best that it could be and I've talked about all of the uh, techniques that I use that are not necessarily part of the pattern instructions. I've talked about um, some tailoring, some like hand finishing techniques that I think will make this coat something that is going to last a very long time, but also something that is going to look nice. And after having put it on, so I filmed the, the part of this video where I'm wearing the cape coat back in March. <laughs> and it's it's been it's been quite some time but just from wearing it for that video i can tell you that it feels fantastic and i feel fantastic in it all of the work was worth it The only thing I would do differently next time would be probably to streamline the videoing and the recording process and maybe not do as much. Uh, but I live and learn and I learned a lot from it and I have a record for the future and I hope that you also learned from it. My only regret with this cape coat is actually the timing and that I put it off for so long and then but I mean like who was to know that there's gonna be a pandemic and I would be sequestered in my apartment but I have not actually had any opportunity to wear this cape coat in the real world because I haven't left my apartment in well I've left my apartment for grocery shopping but it's, it's just it's just been um, basically at home in pajamas and sweatpants for the last two and a half months so I wish that I had um, finished it earlier so that I had actually worn it but alas that is something that I can't go back and fix and that is something that really nobody could have foretold and in fact um, in the last video I said that I maybe it wasn't the last video maybe it was on Instagram anyhow I said that well I better finish this cape coat if I want 
to be able to wear it uh, in the spring at all. And uh, that was a very naive thought. It was at the very beginning of this whole thing in March. And little did I know that not only would I not get a chance to wear it, I also wouldn't get a chance to wear anything else. Uh, and so that's, that's my biggest regret. It's the timing, the, the, how long it took me to do, how long I left it off. But live and learn, things are just the way they are. As far as the actual construction, I don't regret anything. I would do it all over again. And I, I love this coat. At first, I wasn't sure about the color because if you remember, I had tried to make it in a different wool that didn't work out. And so the color I, I thought was a bit muted for what I wanted. But again, having worn it for the photos and the video, I think the color is fine. And my biggest yes, I made the right choice with this whole thing was actually the fabric itself. I am so, so very glad that I listened to my instincts and I did not go ahead with the thicker wool that I tried at first because it would have been, it would have been just impossible to wear this garment. It would have been so heavy, both in weight and in warmth and it just wouldn't have been the same. This fabric, this weight of this fabric is perfect for the cape it is just breezy and floaty but it's still wool so it's still warm and then the fact that i flat lined it with flannel for the fronts makes it that little bit warmer and so i think as far as the fabric choices i made the the, the right choice the perfect choice for all of this so that's something that had been um that I had been worrying about, you know, did I make the right choice? Is fabric too thick? Is fabric too thin? And I think in the end, um, I listened to my gut and things worked out for the better. And again, it's just perfect. I'm also very glad that I chose that velvet ribbon for the hem for the cape because even though it is, it is a slightly darker shade, it adds so much, not glamour, but like that, that special touch that it's not just it's not just a hem and it's not just folded under or searched. Like it really adds a, a little bit of pizzazz and, and specialness to this whole thing. But those are really my final thoughts. Um, I hope that I would have a lot more thoughts about it, but I've actually shared a lot of them with you in this process and it was a long process. Um, I started this coat in, in its you know, from the very beginning, from muslin in, I think I started back in August, and I finished it in March, so it was a long time in the making, probably the longest thing I've ever made, and definitely the most involved garment that I've ever made, and if nothing else, it has really cemented in me that I, I love coat making, and I just can't get enough. I can't get enough coats because I love coats, but also the process of coat making, to me, is just fascinating and I'm absolutely smitten and hooked and it's very strange because I've said this before I am the kind of person who likes a quick project I like to have things now but codes are so special and they take a long time but if you if you do it right it's a, one a garment that's gonna last a very long time but also a garment that has a lot of impact like you can make as many t-shirts as you want but a coat a coat will get your heart racing and a coat will get you compliments and a coat will make you feel really truly accomplished as um, as a seamstress as a tailor as whatever you want to call it so that is where i stand with this coat uh, i'm going to put some more clips of me wearing it now and i hope that you have enjoyed this series and i've enjoyed it it's also been a lot of hard work That is really all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.